Aloha. Welcome to Talk Story with John Waihei. You know, I couldn't help but think what exciting times we live in, at, uh, all of us. Um, we, we, we may have this issue or that issue, but this past weekend we saw something magnificent happen. We saw the return of the Hokulea after it had circumvented the globe. It had spent the last, what, three years or so on a voyage, and it returned back to Hawaii. And I thought that was one of the most exciting things that has happened to our state in recent years. So we invited, as our guest today, Clyde Nomuo, who is the CEO of the Polynesian Voyaging Society, which is the, I guess, the umbrella organization for the Hokulea and for the Va'a'ohana, apparently. There is a whole s group of, uh, right. of uh, traveling canoes. Well, welcome, Clyde. Thank you. And you must be up to your throat in, uh, as we say, yeah, alligators, alligators, or, or yeah. oh, sharks, maybe, yeah. in yeah. Hawaii. Uh, either way, they're both vicious. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so uh, before we start, when, when did the journey around the world start? When? It, it started in 2013, and the first leg of the journey was a statewide. Well, that's four years ago. That's, yeah. that's been about four years ago. The first year we spent sailing around Hawaii, because Nainoa Thompson, who is our uh, Po navigator wanted to make sure that the community really supported this this voyage. He wanted to make sure that every community that we went to, he asked them, you know, we're gonna we're gonna take this canoe around the world because in his mind the Hokulea really belongs to Hawaii. It doesn't belong to the Polynesian Voyaging Society. Okay. So the response we got was, yeah, we should do this this very adventurous and and somewhat dangerous sail. And so in May of 2014, we embarked on the international leg of the voyage. And of course, that was down through the Pacific, Tahiti, and et cetera. So the first stop would be, would it was uh, French Polynesia. That's it was correct. To Tahiti. Yes. And, and, and then you started going around. And then we started going around the world. And so it was New Zealand, down to Australia, and then into the Indian Ocean, which, you know, could be very, very dangerous. We were lucky that we had the U.S. Coast Guard helping. Um, we stopped in Indonesia. We stopped in Mozambique. Uh, we stopped in South Africa. So. How, how do you get clearances for all of this? I mean, the, um, the logistics. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I can see where there is one challenge, the major challenge would be uh, the, the physical act of actually traveling around the world right. in a canoe yes. uh, with uh, ancient navigation techniques. Yeah. I mean, what a phenomenal challenge. But in addition to that, I, I'm just looking at you, and you're sort yeah. of the CEO of this Bell organization. I mean, did you have to go get passports for everybody, um, uh, visas? I mean, what what's involved? There, well, we had a person who devoted full time to just doing logistics and because we can't keep the crew on board for too long we have to fly a crew in and fly a crew out so as we were so traveling we changed, crew we changed crews maybe every 20 25 days when we were in the Indian Ocean the crew changes were longer and one of the reasons they were longer is that we really needed to use uh, aircraft carriers air airlines other than Hawaiian Airlines Hawaiian Airlines is our title sponsor and they've been flying us all over the world. Yeah, they but apparently did a very good job. I mean, outstanding. You know, shout out to Hawaiian Airlines for their contribution. Yeah. They really were outstanding, but they fly as far as Australia, but they don't fly into the Indian Ocean. So once we got as far as Australia and we sailed on to Indonesia, we needed to use other commercial carriers to fly us from Australia to 
places like Indonesia, so we had to fly crews in and out. And that got very, very expensive. So the logistics included all of the, the customs requirements of the city that we were sailing into. Uh, every crew member, of course, had to have a passport. In some cases, there were medical clearances that were required. Wow. And we have a doctor on board the, the vessel at all times. There's always a doctor on board for any medical emergencies as well as making sure that everyone has the medical clearances that they need. So it's a it's a huge undertaking, and I don't think that. Can you imagine uh, ancestors did that? Uh, yeah, no, I, I, the, and, and of course that makes you feel really means. good, right? I mean, it makes you feel great because you just to think that that Native Hawaiians, without the use of instruments and computers, was able to sail to places where they believed there was land. And so that's, to me, that's really the exciting thing about this whole voyage. It really does, again, confirm that Native Hawaiians didn't just sail and, and discover things accidentally, that it really was about a very, you know, focused intentions of looking for land that they knew was somewhere out there. But they knew they were laying out yeah. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah you, um, I hate to bring this up because it sounds so commercial, but did you, saw, you, did you see the movie Moana? I did, I and, did. And, and is it sort of, uh, it, you know, does it portray, no, I, I know it's an animation, and, and right. so, but did it portray, I thought it did anyway, that, that very idea, the idea of intention, the idea yeah. that you actually knew that there was something out right. there and you were heading to it. I, I think, and of course I know was was consultant on the movie, but uh, he wanted to be real sure that he wasn't named as one of the credits because he simply offered what he thought was just advice that anyone could have done. But I think overall, of course, it's entertainment. That's what the movie's right, about. Right. But but I'd say a lot of it was correct in terms of, you know, the, the, when, when Moana sails off, she's going somewhere. She's not simply sailing around yeah, aimlessly. Just, you know, see, yeah. you know, well, well, that idea of intention, though, that, that, well, first of all, I mean, there's so many things that come out of your, just your discussion. Who got, I mean, the Indian Ocean is not a safe place. I mean, no. isn't that where all the no. pirates hang out and all of that? Yeah. Any, any stories along those lines? No, or? we, um, we were real careful, and of course, we had, you know, um, a whole security team that helped us to, um, analyze the risk, and they monitored the situation whenever there was a pirate attack on the ocean. And what we found was that there were very, very few incidents prior to us going into the Indian Ocean. Evidently, the pirates used a different technique. They they weren't uh, they weren't pirating people along the ocean, they were doing it on land. So we were lucky that we did not have any incidents at all. In fact, over the span of the voyage, we had maybe one incident where somebody fell overboard. But luckily, we had this device. It's called a man overboard suit. And the, the, uh, the sailor that fell off the canoe, we were able to rescue him very, very quickly. So it was never well, an issue. Well, you mentioned him. But you you also took uh, women were a lot, on board. A lot of women on board, yeah. And, and, uh, okay, I, is there a kind of like, a, I'm sure there's a listing of all these individuals, but right. in, in their own way, they're all heroes. Oh, yes. They're all heroes, yes. uh, you know, for today's mm -hmm. age. And is there going to be like a place where pictures and videotapes and yeah. photographs of all of this are, are, are going to be displayed. Is, right. is, is, there, is there a plan the, for that? The, the, if people are interested, hokulea.org is our website, and all of the crew members are listed on the website, and in, in most cases there are pictures of the crew members as well. Um, we, we did have a few female captains that sailed with us as well. In fact, bringing the canoe home from Tahiti back to Honolulu. Um uh, Kailani Murphy was our captain. Kailani, yeah, sure. yeah she's she, she excellent. Was, uh, she, wasn't she also in navigation training? Yes, yes, and she teaches navigation training at Tonglu Community College. So she did an outstanding job. So there are many women on board as well. We were a little bit skeptical because in the Indian Ocean, um, 
the, the religious practices of people living along the Indian Ocean really have a, a particular view of women. And so we were a little bit nervous whether we should have women on board the canoe when she sailed through the Indian, through the Indian Ocean. But at the end of the day, we ended up just including women as well, and we did not run into any problems. How many master navigators does the... Oh, uh, probably the less than 10, the, or the ones that, that actually sailed, uh, probably less than five. Really? That, that covered most of it. Yeah, Bruce so Blankenfeld. Nainoa and... Nainoa did uh, several legs. Bruce Blankenfeld um, did a number of legs. Uh, Kalepa Babayan uh, sailed so much that his wife was ready to leave him. <laughs> <laughs> so there were there were a few of them that, that sailed for long distances and long periods as well. So. Right, but all, there are about 10 master navigators. Yeah, just about, yeah. It's, it's amazing when you think back to a day when there were none. Yeah, you know, and yeah, now it is amazing. That. Now, as I understand it, yesterday, or well, Saturday was the big event. That's Saturday correct. was the homecoming, all right? Right. So tell me, describe Saturday, uh, uh, what, you, um, what you hoped it would be and what it turned there, out. You know, an, uh, it's really hard, as we were going through the planning, We've never experienced anything like this before, so we really didn't have a model to work against. Right. We had to discover things as we went along, and the, the emphasis was to make sure that everyone was safe, and what we were worried about is that people in their enthusiasm might get themselves into trouble. Okay. So we wanted to be sure that the canoe had a buffer around it to make sure that none of the canoes or surfboards or swimmers got too Even close. Even they went out in the ocean? to greet the canoe and, and that happened canoe as that, it came in. And that happened in 1976 when, when she came back to Kualoa. Uh, so we were just afraid that that might happen. The Coast Guard did an excellent job of trying to keep people away from the canoe as much as they could. And luckily there were no incidents at all. But and. An event such as this, where we expected there would be 25,000 people, you know, the parking becomes an issue, security becomes an issue, but the biggest issue really is that everything gets so, so expensive. Uh, renting the, the, the video screens for people to be able to see what's going on. Mm. I mean, a, a, a machine like that is $15,000 a day. Wow. But, you know, you have to do it because we knew that people coming down to Ala Moana. How many really, people did you do? I, I would estimate, estimate 25,000 at the height. Throughout the day, probably more than that, because once she came in and we started the formal ceremonies, a lot of people left, but there were more people that came in in the afternoon. So I'd say maybe 30,000 altogether, okay. but at the beginning, probably closer to 25. Yeah, I, I heard some estimates that went as high as 50. 50, yeah, yeah. I've heard that too. Um, I, I don't think it was that many, but I, th I think... And but it people, was definitely it, a crowd. It was a huge crowd. And but why, uh, and so why, why Al Moana instead of... Uh, um, one of the reasons that we went to uh, Magic Island, we, we thought about Kualoa because that is where she was born, and we really thought taking her back to where she was born, uh, that's where she was launched for the very first time. But because Kamehameha Highway is a two-lane highway, oh. we knew that the traffic would, would be unbearable, yeah. and people would get very angry because they wouldn't be able to get through. So the reason we selected Magic Island is that we knew that parking could be controlled much better than going back to Kualoa. We are going to be right back uh, in a few minutes to continue this conversation with Clyde Numor from the Polynesian Voyaging Society. He is the uh, CEO. And by the way, um, if you want to call us, our phone number is 415-871-2474. Is it a feeling? Is it a place? Is it an idea? At Dive Heart, we believe freedom is all of these and more, regardless of your ability. Dive Heart wants to help you escape the bonds of this world and defy gravity. Since 2001, Dive Heart has helped children, adults, and veterans of all abilities go where they have never gone before. Dive Heart has helped them transition to their new normal. Search DiveHeart.org and share our mission with others, and in the process, help people of all abilities imagine the possibilities in their lives.
Aloha and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'i and our special guest today, Clyde Numo from the uh, Polynesian Voyaging Society. Once again, if you want to call us, our number is 415-871-2474. Clyde, you know, it, it was such an exciting day and, and so many people. And, I, you know, I, 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 this time I have to confess I, I was lazy. I, I watched it on television. So there were probably like tens of thousands of people like yeah. myself that, and you know, I guess there was nothing better than being there, but even on television, the whole experience was so moving. Yeah. And one of the most moving uh, moments was listening to Nainoa thank all the people who uh, came before, who made mm -hmm. this whole m miracle right. possible, you know, and uh, uh, yeah. it, it just was an amazing day. I, I can't imagine what it was like being there. Uh, well, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure. I felt all the excitement. I was more worried about making sure everything <laughs> went off okay. Yeah. You know, I was I was concerned that nobody drowned. You know, nobody and got no, stampeded on. Happened, right? Yeah, and nothing bad happened. You know, we did end up having to send somebody to the hospital, but it w had nothing to do with the crowd or anything else. But, but overall, you know, even the even the talking heads, okay, from the various news uh, outlets, yes, they were getting excited. Oh yeah. And they were, you know, you could see like, wow, this is all happening. So, yeah. it, I, okay, but there was a, an earlier, uh, I, I distinctly remember, uh, an earlier coming homecoming when uh, my son and I got into a canoe and actually went out there and greeted the people coming in. Yes. So I can see where, the, where for the people that, that have the ability, that, that was fun. I mean, yeah. just surrounding this just great armada of people coming in. Yeah. And that happened to a limited extent this time. Um, we had the Coast Guard on jet skis, though, so trying to keep people <laughs> away because, you know, I mean, we didn't want anyone to get Getting run right, over right. by the canoe. So, but uh, nonetheless, the enthusiasm, the excitement as she neared the channel, people started to applaud. Um, it really was a chicken skin moment. It, it was very, very well, exciting. You know, and, yeah. and, and to accomplish all of this. Now, uh, where, where does that all end? I mean, is it over? Or, or is there some way, are, are we building? on that enthusiasm? Are we building yeah. on that experience? We we had a dinner last night with some of the Ocean Elders, which is a group that is really committed to protecting the oceans. So let, let's talk about these Ocean Elders. These are not people only, from, this is not, these are not just kupuna from Hawaii. No. This is no. an international group of ocean experts, I guess, That's in their correct. own fields. Yeah. Who uh, come to have been acknowledged. Right. Uh, internationally right. as being masters, uh, in a sense, of uh, being ocean elders, right. you know? And right. so who are some of the people that uh, are Jean-Michel Cousteau, who is Jacques Cousteau's son, is a member of the ocean elders. Jackson Brown, the musician. So it's a it's a variety of different people. Sylvia Earle, who's an ocean scientist. Nainoa Tom. Nainoa is, is a member, as well as Ted Turner. So it's a, um, and Sir Richard Branson is also a member of the ocean elders. So it's a, it's a mixed group of individuals, but their unifying issue, of course, is the oceans and protecting the oceans. So some of them were here for homecoming on Saturday. Some are here this, this morning. We have a panel discussion. Yeah, first we had a dinner with them last we night. We had a dinner right? last night, and yeah. this morning we're having a panel discussion with, with some of the, not only the ocean elders, but, but other people as well at the convention center. So what's going on at the convention center that um, you're part of? That's yeah, a part of your following. sure. Mm -hmm. Yesterday we we had uh, a youth congress that we would have had anyway, even if it weren't part of the homecoming. But it just happens that the timing coincided with the homecoming. So PBS helped how to lucky. organize. How, how lucky, lucky for for them yeah, and how yeah. lucky for us. Yeah. Um, and today starts our youth summit because one of the things that Nainoa wanted to really be sure about is that we brought all of our education.
educational partners together to talk about what the best practices were while Hokulea was sailing around the world. We did a lot of canoe to classroom experiences, Google Hangouts is what they're called, where school children could listen to what was going on on the canoe as they were sailing. In their classrooms. In their in classrooms. And very exciting for the kids. Wow. Yeah. So we did a lot of those, and and again, we had people like Punahou School, Kamehameha, that were our educational partners, and so this summit... I, I hope you had a couple of public schools. We did, we did. In fact, uh, uh, some of the charter schools were involved as well. Fantastic. Yeah, yeah but, but the idea for the summit was to bring all those folks together to share what it is they did for Malama Honua for the worldwide sale. So these sale. young people that are participating in this conference, are they all from Hawaii or elsewhere? As well. the, the Youth Congress is made up of, uh, of students from all over the world. Wow. Um, the, the issue, of course, is the expense of getting them here. So the idea was that there would be 150 delegates to the Congress, but I think they fell short of that number because Hawaii is such a remote location that the cost was was prohibitive. So we but probably had 100 you, people. You, 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 brought, uh, you actually also involved students from Hawaii. We and that was the good thing about having it here was an opportunity for our students to participate as well. You know, we were just discussing this uh, uh, this whole uh, weekend um, with uh, with my family, uh, my son, my my wife, and I, and um, we, we were talking about what a unifying event it was. Yes. And obviously, for Native Hawaiians, it, it's a symbol of pride and, right. uh, and so forth. But for all of Hawaii. Yeah. You know, in fact, if yeah. you looked at the uh, people that were attending and the people walking around, <laughs> right today, you can go into uh, a, a shopping center and see people walking around with Welcome Home uh, Hokulea t-shirts and yeah. stuff. And they're, uh, you know, they're not even, a lot of them may not even be from Hawaii. No. No. So it had this unifying effect, uh, and yeah. uh, you know, congratulations on we that. Had, um, we had the Boston Globe that, that flew in a, a team to help cover this. Boston Globe? The Boston Globe, CNN, we had uh, the CBS Nightly News come down to do a piece. So we've had media outlets from across the world that, that came in. So yeah, when you, when you say that the excitement is not limited just to Hawaii, that's correct. It's it's, it's really the, the phenomenon has gone around the world, and it's just this excitement that this little canoe sailed around the world and got back safely. And, and I mean, the, the, the intelligence of the people that yep. have to navigate this yep. stuff in terms of knowing and feeling, I mean, it's a, it's, it's a kind, it's a navigation system that's based on all your senses. It's right. not just here, it's, you know, time smell it's the right it's just knowing where you are wherever you are you know yeah. it's amazing yeah. and we're not always you know when, when they were coming home from uh, Tahiti there was there was a time where Hikanalia was not right next to Hokulea because uh, Hikanalia each, is the, that's the uh, sister canoe uh, to Hokulea and uh, you know because navigators will will use different techniques they weren't always exactly next to each other but nonetheless they made it back together but um, but relying on those those techniques such as the stars and the waves and etc um, brought both canoes home safely it's but uh, it is amazing it's it is amazing. amazing and it does give I think especially Hawaiians a real sense of pride one of the reasons that I agreed to to help PVS as I left different careers um, is because in 1976 when Hokulea sailed and, and came back I think it really started the Hawaiian Renaissance and it was so exciting a well, time. Well, it boosted through the city. Yeah, it no did boost doubt. it. Yeah. And, and I think, though, having worked at, at the Office of Hawaiian Affairs for 10 years, what I realized is that that enthusiasm that we felt back in the 1970s and early 1980s had started to wane, and that our younger generation didn't experience what we did when Hokulea sailed, because it reminded Hawaiians that ours is a proud heritage, and ours is, is, is a heritage of vast intelligence and so um, 
you know, I really wanted to help to, to try to recapture that. But the, the message, I mean, and you did, I mean, you saw that at the homecoming, okay. But the message of um, Malama Honua, taking care of where you where yeah. you are. I mean, that was the message that spread around the world, the idea of sustainability and creating a better planet right. for everybody. So, as I understand it, not only did this idea of having a canoe that represented Hawaii, but they're now voyaging canoes all over the Pacific. That's Maybe correct. even other oceans as well, I'm not sure. Yeah. And, and so you, this organization called Ohana Ba, or Family of the Canoe. Right. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about that aspect of what, what has been done. Yeah, we had, um, of course, you know, sailing is a very expensive proposition, so when we were organizing homecoming, some of the communities communities in the South Pacific just didn't have the resources. They may have canoes, but to, to fund a crew to sail to Hawaii was very expensive. But we did have at least three canoes coming up from the South Pacific. And, and this is a new phenomenon that, of course, started with, with the sale of Hokulea. Um, so there are probably way more than that. And, and in our own community, Kauai just launched their canoe, I think it was last year. And they have the Big Island, the Burnham and the Kauai yes, Burnham's yes. canoe. Yes, so there's one on Maui, one on the Big Island, one on Kauai now. And Hawaii Loa is, of course, here in Honolulu. So they were all part of the flotilla on Saturday, too. And so this idea of traveling is not restricted to just one canoe. It's, no, it's no. the it's people are starting to pick it up. I mean, That's not correct. only uh, so at least all over Polynesia. Yeah, you well, begin to see this, but and and probably beyond that. Uh, last night, uh, the Lieutenant Governor of Alaska was, was uh, joined us for dinner, um, and Byron Malott and, and his son, who's uh, part of the Sea Alaska Corporation, and they talked about the sailing history in of the um, Native people of Alaska. Oh, fantastic. And how they're going to try to bring that back as well. Well, you're having a fundraiser tonight. We are. We and are. Uh, we've got over 100 tables sold. And yes. It's, it's, I, I, I know that you probably probably sold out, but if people want to sneak a ticket in, who, who uh, You know, they can call us at, at or they can email What's your us. Phone number you know, I, I don't even it? have. <laughs> 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 but if they go on the website, you know, there, there's a way of emailing us, uh, www.hokulea.org. And that's the one way people can org. support. That's we right. Support, and I'm yeah. sure there'll be others. That's and, correct. And uh, we can, even if you can't sail, you can lend your support to yes. uh, to all of this by helping the, or well, going to the website for right, the Polynesian right. Voyaging Society. And we'll have t-shirts for sale on the website as well. Well, thank you very much. You are welcome, Governor. And, and you know, fantastic weekend, and, and thank you for all your good work. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah.